What's going on my fellow reef builders? I am Jake Adams on a very exciting project we're gonna be working on today. This 400 gallon, eight foot long planet aquarium has been here at the studio far too long. And part of the reason for that is I wanted to get everything exactly right. One of the most important things that required a degree of precision was enlarging the holes in the PVC bottom of this tank. So it came pre-drilled and routed for one inch bulkheads, but I want to pass a lot more volume through it. So what we did in a previous video is we enlarged all the holes for a one and a half inch bulkhead, this one right here. And you'll see the, the reason it was routed is so that it would fit this gasket perfectly here, right? So, so because it fits perfectly in this hole, when the bulkhead comes down on it, it's not gonna flatten out. It's just gonna be completely contained and compressed here. So this is gonna be one of the most solid parts of this build. Um, so these holes were for the closed loop. But before we could build all that, Evan and I, Evan behind the camera, um, took off all the paneling and we leveled the tank. You guys know how much of a saga our very uneven, uh, let's call it abstract, abstract flooring has been. Um, it's been such a challenge leveling all the tanks, but since this is a steel frame stand, it's got built-in leveling feet. Thank you, Planet Aquarium, for putting some big ass leveling feet on here. So that is done. Now we have complete access to the tank. The holes are ready. And now we just need to assemble our closed loop. So there's four holes. Two of them are gonna be inlets, two of them are outlets. And each closed loop is gonna be powered by a Ecotech Marine Vectra L2. Thank you very much, Ecotech Marine. Uh, so what do we need? Any typical closed loop, you're gonna want uh, unions. And this actually comes with unions so we can remove the pump. Uh, you want some ball valves so that when you take the pump off for servicing, water doesn't go everywhere. And then we're going pretty much uh, directly to a street elbow right into the bulkhead. So putting this all together off the tank is gonna be really easy, but doing the final mating process to the bulkheads where they are is gonna be a little bit more challenge. So um, we're gonna get started with some pre-assembly and see how it comes together. So wish us luck.
right, so we have a lot of the pre-assembly put together. And right when we were about to do kind of like the final test fit, um, it's funny how long and how much time I spent like uh, doing thought experiments of how the plumbing was gonna come together and I thought it was gonna be super slick and tricky and use fewer parts by using these street elbows that would go straight into the bulkhead saving space. But then it turned out that the way that the pump has to attach underneath the tank, there just wasn't enough clearance from this uh, valve to like, get into the, the street elbow, right? So the street elbow is kind of fixed position, but because of the brace right here, it was like matching up like that. So it's funny because then you like backtrack and do a much, much simpler solution. So now we're gonna go with just a straight adapter and a plain old slip 90 degree elbow. And that's gonna give us a lot more freedom to mate up both the in intake and the outlet um, at the separate levels, because you see they're not exactly on the same plane. So we have a solution that's actually gonna make it a lot easier to install on the tank after all. So um, like Evan says, it's not a project until you have a couple runs to Home Depot. We did one right before for stuff we knew we needed, and we just got back from another one for stuff, well, as we're improvising this project, but we're getting really close to the uh, final assembly, and man, I cannot wait to see some water in it, so let's keep going. I feel like there's a way that I should be able to just glue this right in place and then kind of rotate it where it needs to be. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about that plan. Let me just double check again. The pump will have some clearance. Yeah, it should be, should be like awesome. We are in the home stretch. We've done a little test fitting here because it's not, it's not just what we're putting together, but the order in which we put it in because there's a lot of little things that have to go perfectly. And it's important that there's no tension or pressure in any places that will cause stress over time. So So we have one more part to put together, but if you look at this right here, look how tight that is. It just floats right where it should be. So now all I have to do is undo this coupling. And then we're gonna put this on and then uh, do the final assembly of the pump. So yeah, we have to do this one more time on the other loop of the closed loop and we'll be uh, in the home stretch. Fancy seeing you here at ground level of the uh, aquarium build here, the 400 gallon at the studio. It took a really, really long time to finally do this project, but it's, it's finished. It's finished for now, <laughs> as much as it's gonna be. And uh, I'm just really, really proud of it. So let me show you how it came together. So I'm really glad I did this. 
and took my time doing this. And you can see that, uh, yeah, it's actually quite beautiful. We have one closed loop here and another closed loop over there. I'm gonna walk you through. We have, uh, we have four holes in the bottom of the tank, inch and a half bulkheads. Both of the holes on the inside are the inlets and the holes on the outside are the outlets. The idea with a good plumbing project is to have as few elbows as possible, especially, more importantly, at the um, after the pump, because this is where a lot more pressure will build up than it will on the inlet. Um, so we've got a Vectra L2 basically hanging in midair, two uh, unions, this is actually really nice to have these built in, um, especially for a project like this, because back in the day, you know, I would have just have to shell extra money for unions here and here, and it would have been not nearly as clean of a project. So the water comes down in here, goes through the valve. We've got a union pump, union valve, and then it goes back to the tank. Um, so we did use an adapter right here to, um, Cover the inch and a quarter up to inch and a half, just so kind of everything would be pretty much the same. Um, what else do I want to say about this? Yeah, so this this turned out so solid that for now the pump is actually just hanging. It's just hanging off the tank, and I don't think that's a good permanent solution. I want to figure out a way to at least take off a little bit of pressure by um, attaching something here to the bottom uh, plate, the bottom wood panel underneath the tank, and just trying to support the pump just a little bit. But um, I, uh, I'm a little bit, a little tiny bit nervous because I haven't fired it up yet. We calculated that when, as we were building the plumbing and assembling it all, there was about 20 to 22 places where it could leak per closed loop. So there's like over 40 chances for this tank to leak all over the place. But you want to know the good news? I already have a hundred gallons of water in it with no leaks. No leaks. The super mega dual closed loop project already has a hundred gallons of water on top of it and no leaks. So you know what that means. It's time to fire up the pumps. So one thing to keep in mind is for now, the nozzle is only just an inch and a half street elbow just to kind of direct the water out so we don't have a fountain hitting the ceiling. Um, so that's something that I'm going to tweak, but I don't expect to see too much velocity because it's such a wide um, outlet, but that's something that, uh, you know, it's going to take some practice and some experimentation uh, to see how it goes. So if you're as ready as I am, I think it's about time to fire this thing up and see what it can do. Now it's like possibly the biggest moment of truth on the channel ever. All I have to do, I think, <laughs> is turn on the power. We're gonna see how this little experiment turned out. So let's find out. Wake up pumps, all oh, they're both set to the lowest setting. Oh, oh, I hear stuff. I hear things. I hear motion. No water. I see movement and it's at the lowest setting. Oh my goodness, that is actually a lot of low. I did that at the lowest setting, you guys. Oh my goodness. All right, so I think what I wanna do is turn off one of the pumps and turn the other one on full blast. So let's try that. Whee! Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that moves a little bit of water. Ooh, the pump is humming. I see bubbles everywhere. Oh man, this is super exciting. I gotta get you a little bit more of a close up. So that is one pump, one outlet out of a uh, inch and a half nozzle. And uh, that's with very little pressure coming behind it. Holy crap, man, that is actually really moving a lot of water. Let me uh, put my hand in there, see what that feels like. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's a, that's a nice good burst of water. That's a nice good burst of water flow. All right. I am super excited about the, uh, the closed loop finally being completed because one thing that's kind of funny is the Vortec came out right around the time that closed loops became popular. So 
I could make the case that closed loops were almost killed by Vortex and here I am, I'm um, gonna call it 12 years later, 12 years later, and I'm now revisiting closed loop on my first jumbo jumbo reef tank using the Ecotech Marine second generation large Vectra pumps. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna have to do some really close inspection and just make sure there's no leaks. Um, I'm, I'm super excited. Um, I guess the next thing I need to do is uh, besides tweak kind of the outlets is get the pumps programmed on either EcoSmart Live or Mobius. I'm not sure which one exactly. And then I think plumbing up the sump and stuff, that's gonna be pretty simple, at least straightforward. Um, the choice of equipment to go underneath, it can actually rotate a little bit. Um, but the final tricky, tricky thing for this tank is gonna be, how do you aquascape this tank? I definitely do not wanna pile of rocks in there. Um, I have a few ideas I'm kicking around, but if you have any ideas that you would like to see me try, on the eight foot, 400 gallon hardline reef tank, specifically, specifically for SPS, please put those comments down below. And if you want to you know, follow along with this tank build, make sure to uh, subscribe. If you like this type of build video, go ahead and uh, hook me up with a like. And uh, you know, I wasn't able to bring everybody along in granular detail on the builds of all the tanks here at the Reef Builder Studio, but I'm really gonna try to make up for it with the build of the 400 gallon tank. So, thanks to everybody for tuning in. I'm gonna go play with my new toy over there, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Later.